Hello guys, Arkin here. I just want to take some time to tell you guys that we have a Patreon set up for the channel. It's an additional way you can support us. So I will put the link in the YouTube cards and in the description. Thanks for checking it out and I hope you enjoyed the video. Hey! Can you hear me? Chapter 2 Flames and Cigarettes <sighs> What a night! While trying to sleep, I hear my housemates running back and forth in the hallway, making a ruckus. Being used to the silence of the village, I find it hard to fall asleep. My dad snores, of course, but I was used to that after many years. The new environment has me feeling very groggy. I get out of bed, stretching my sore back and scratching my eyes. Ugh... It was hot last night. I'm still so sweaty. My underwear is almost tighter. I have to adjust them. My fur is a little damp, but luckily it's not crumpled. It's 7.01. Classes start at 8.30. That should be plenty of time. After making my bed, I grab my phone and check my notifications. Huh, 112 messages from Gabriel overnight. And a dry morning from Hedwig, written literally 15 minutes ago. That's nice. It's surprising he texted me at all. I reply with a smiley face. He read it, but didn't reply. My finger shakes convulsively as I click on Gabriel's chat. My phone freezes for a second. Wow. Half the stuff he sent are memes. I don't even know the context of the jokes, but they're still funny. His last message was at 4 a.m. Night! Less than 3. I text him back. Are you even getting any sleep? Continuing to sit in my underwear, I start a chat with Vilmar. Noticing the fact that I'm online, he starts texting me as well. We text good morning almost simultaneously. Putting my phone aside, I yawn. It's hard to get used to new surroundings. And the damn stuffy air around here. If I were a flower, I'd have dried up in here by now. It takes me about 20 minutes to shower and brush my teeth. The showers are public, but there were no people in the morning, which I'm glad for. Vilmar lets me know he'll stop by my room in about 10 minutes. I spend the rest of the time before he arrives gathering my supplies for the following classes. I don't know if notebooks are necessary, but I'll take a couple just in case. There's a knock on the door. Vilmar is piling into my room. I have a feeling this room's too small for him. I wonder if there are bedrooms for individual species here. Good morning again. Ready for your first lesson? He's putting something on my nightstand. I think so, but uh, what did you bring? Vilmar smiles. The snow leopard opened some kind of container. Oh, breakfast. Perfect timing. I smile shyly, taking the container in my hands. I assumed you'd want breakfast since I didn't show you where the kitchen is. Thanks. I say with my mouth full. There's a couple of ham and cheese pancakes. Pretty good. He chuckles and nods toward my arm. By the way, what's that stain on your paw? Hmm? He points at my palm. Oh, what the? There's a spot on my paw pad. It's blue. It's not so clear, but it's visible. I have no idea where I got that. It doesn't look like I got dirty, and I just took a bath. It's like the fur dyed itself. Vilmar takes my paw and examines it. He rotates it, muttering something. Well, if it doesn't go away soon, maybe I should take you to the infirmary. 
He thinks about it. That seems excessive. Well, the stain isn't very visible. Maybe no one will notice. Vilmar nods. Well, I should probably get going. It's time to go. Unfortunately, I'm busy today and won't be free until later tonight, so don't miss me. I've already finished my pancakes, handing the leopard the empty container. Okay, I'll find something to do. Thanks again for breakfast. Vilmar takes the container and leaves. I pick up my phone and look at the time. I have to go as well. A light gust of wind greets me as I walk out of my room. It's still stuffy, but at least it's not as bad. For now, I need to make it to the classroom. Hmm. Vilmar said it's, uh, somewhere on the first floor, on the right wing. Hedwig and Gabriel should be there by now. After quite a few wrong turns and embarrassing questions for directions, I finally make it. Oddly enough, there are quite a few students in the hallway. I consider myself lucky to have met Hedwig and Gabriel, but I shouldn't close myself off to the rest of my classmates. And here they are. I notice Hedwig in the crowd. He's hard to miss. His dragon wings form a small area around him, no one daring getting close. Can he even sleep on his back with those giant things? Walking up to the pair, there's something glaringly obvious when looking at Gabriel's face. Swollen face, constant yawns, he's sleep deprived. Hedwig stands unmoving with an unimpressed expression on his face, letting sleepy Gabriel use him like a pillow. Um, good morning, guys. I exclaim happily, trying to lift the spirits of our group. The sight of someone as tall as Hedwig getting used as a pillow is amusing, standing at almost two meters. He's the tallest student around here. Gabriel, on the other hand, is one of the shortest students I've seen in the school. He's shorter than me, at about 170 centimeters tall. So it looks pretty funny. Good morning. Hi, Huji. He opens his almost slick eyes and waves at me, even though I'm standing only a meter away from him. Hedwig just sighs heavily, explaining to me. I told him he'd be a vegetable in the morning, but as you can see, that didn't stop him. I giggle and Gabriel's ears perk up, starting to get defensive. Hey, you're not my mother, okay? I can go to bed at whatever time I want? His disheveled fur and quivering voice makes him look drunk, which only causes another fit of laughter from me and the other students. But you do want some sleep, right? He's delayed in answering. It doesn't matter. I feel fine. He pulls away from Hedwig. Way to go. You made him wake up. I wanted to get some more rest from him. Too bad. Gabriel and I start laughing. Hedwig keeps his usual stern expression, not amused. Does he even know how to laugh? Meanwhile, the cluster of people outside the classroom grows larger and larger. I also couldn't help but notice the couple's clothes. We're all supposed to be wearing the same academy uniform. Poor Hedwig's clothes are so tight, they might rip apart at any moment. Maybe there weren't any bigger sizes? Someone must have made him wear it. Gabriel, still looking dejected and barely staying awake, had some interesting additions to his uniform. He had a black glove on his right paw. Whether he had lost the other one or it was a peculiarity of his style didn't change the matter. It looked quite interesting. Body parts were exposed, making it immediately clear that he was a tiger. With a simple question, Hedwig ruins my morning. Hey, Huji, what's that spot on your paw? He nods towards my palm. Damn it, how did he see that? Vilmar barely noticed it, even though we've known each other since we were kids. I... I don't know. It just showed up this morning. He raises his eyebrow at me skeptically, but says nothing more. After a moment, Mr. Astor appears. The hallway immediately falls silent. The crowd disperses, letting him through. He opens the door to the auditorium with a serious expression. 
come in. All the students begin to slowly pour into their seats. As I enter the classroom, I'm struck by how bright it is. I have to squint to avoid the pain in my eyes. Gabriel must be suffering right now. Mr. Astor quickly sits down on his desk, shuffling a stack of paper on his paws. The three of us take seats on the top rows of the auditorium. The first rows remain empty, everyone sitting towards the back of the classroom. Once we are comfortably seated, we don't dare make a sound. It's so quiet that you can even hear the birds singing outside. A damn scary and intimidating atmosphere, to be honest. Let's get started. The lion stands up from his chair and walks to the middle of the room. His step and movements are rigid but confident. He turns to us, and his marker behind him begins to write his name on the board by itself. My name is Mr. Astor. I'll be your spellcasting teacher, as well as your new class advisor, or mentor, as you prefer. He takes his seat again. Our gang of three only glances at each other occasionally. I'm warning you. I treat everyone equally, I do not play favorites, and I never will. As long as you're not causing the academy any problems, you're doing your job well. He looks away, staring out the window. Moreover, if you have any issues regarding your studies or otherwise, you should let me know first. Any problem can be solved, even the most complicated one. Mr. Astor sighs heavily. And now, about your training and education. He takes a clipboard in his paws and flips the page. His gaze travels down the list of students. He must have studied our names and backgrounds. As you all may know, my teachings and research are the basis of most of your curriculum in this academy, so you can expect no indulgences, especially in my classes. Mr. Astor takes his gaze away from the window, glaring at everyone, his gaze finally resting upon me. However, in addition to my class, you will have Potion Craft, taught by Mr. Derrick. You can find him on the first floor of the left wing, at the very end of the hallway. Mr. Esther's tone seemed to change when talking about this other teacher. No one else seems to have noticed it. Moving on, every weekend, there are duels between students here. It's been a tradition since the academy was founded. Missing a duel without a valid reason is the strongest disrespect to the academy, and in some cases, severe punishments are given. We can only sit here and absorb the information. Gabriel is still falling asleep, nodding off constantly, and Hedwig is just twirling the pen in his hand. The minutes go by, and Mr. Astor continues on and on about customs and his expectations for this class. Soon enough, I catch myself almost falling asleep. If you have any questions, you can ask me after class, or any other time. My office is on the third floor, number 95. He flips through the pages of a journal, starting to write something down in it. One moment. I immediately turn to Hedwig and Gabriel. Poor Gabriel is sitting right under the sun rays passing through the windows. Scary, huh? He speaks in a whisper, turning to me. There is such a thing. Hedwig keeps twirling the pen in his paw effortlessly, very quickly. He's got nimble fingers for someone his size. Would you like to go to the local cafeteria tonight? Good idea. Would Gabriel be up for it? Hedwig hums contentedly. Coffee is his weakness. Gabriel mumbles something inaudible and turns to us. Coffee? Yeah, let's go. Oh! No talking in this class. A piece of chalk flies through the auditorium, hitting Gabriel right in the forehead. The impact is strong enough to blow him back a little bit. Everyone turns to look at Mr. Astor, who is looking angrier than ever. I'm surprised that it hit him from such a long distance. What accuracy. I immediately shut my mouth. Hedwig cracks a light grin before returning to his usual careless, unamused demeanor. Gabriel rubs his forehead with force. He picks the piece of chalk and swings it around in an attempt to throw it back. The dragon silently grabs the tiger by the paw and stops him. The tiger looks at his friend indignantly, still not saying anything. It's very hard to hold in my laughter at this point. I feel sorry for him. 
Gabriel sat down pouting, continuing to squint against the blinding sun. Remembering the few details of Mr. Astor's monologue, I never thought that skipping duels would have such serious consequences here. I get it's a tradition, aiming to harbor our competitive and fighting spirit, but I think it's excessive since the academy basically forces students to fight each other. But it also makes sense. The magical creatures are almost extinct. If Mr. Astor wants us to fight, he'd have to find a monster for us to fight at the academy. Although from what I've heard, Mr. Astor himself is more of a monster than any of those magical creatures. As if suspecting I was thinking of him, Astor begins to speak again. Turning to the topic of today's lesson, the lion loudly taps his claws on the desk and stands up after a while. He walks to his left. To begin, I'll ask this question. Can any of you tell me anything about magic? His eyes drift slowly around the classroom, lingering on me for just a moment. You, Hedwig, what do you know about magic? Aster looks down at his journal before calling out to his student. The dragon stands up with a nonchalant look and sighs heavily. His voice is stern, with no hint of fear. All magic originates within ourselves. We can think of ourselves as a physical shell for something we call a soul. In other words, we are a kind of vessel for our own soul. We are directly dependent on the soul, and the soul is directly dependent on us. Aster raises a paw. Very well, that's enough. Hedwig sits down in his seat and continues fidgeting his pen around his fingers, as if nothing had happened. The sleepy tiger pays no attention to what is happening. The soul is a storage of our emotions. Magic is not inherent to us. It is born as a result of our experiences which make us strong. If a person lives a sheltered lifestyle, he will only find themselves able to cast magic after they live through an intense experience. It can be anything performing on stage, or leading a group of people, or even a fight to the death. Roughly speaking, anything that makes them step out of his comfort zone and forces them to act or think differently than usual. My mom used to tell me she only learned how to cast magic after she was attacked by a mugger. One man stepped in to defend her and beat the mugger to a pulp, my father. Emotion is experience, and accumulated experience is our soul. A good mage is one who is eager to experience as many situations as possible, eliminating all fear of failure. His range of emotion and understanding is higher, hence his level of magic is higher. It's hard for me not to wonder why my magic still hasn't manifested properly. I can conjure, but it's something very weak. Aster is silent for a moment. He ponders what to say next. His enthusiasm and excited tone surprised me. I wasn't expecting this kind of lecture from someone like him. I mean, really, our magic is our senses. The soul isn't some intangible concept. Your soul is your most precious possession. Without your soul, you cannot exist. Your soul is intimately connected to your real heart. If it is damaged, it will directly affect your physical state. Aster sits down in a seat and sighs heavily. Your soul, your emotions create a unique resource in this world. You open up the ability to create portals, to summon weapons that are destined to you by fate itself. Hedwig and I look at each other. The limits of our skills are still unclear and are being studied by the highest scholars. Our job is to protect all that we care about. That's the reason you're all here. I'm reminded of a little test I took before I was admitted, a psychometric test. It consisted of a couple questions about our family, friends, our objectives, and so on. That being said, magic isn't just about fighting. I think you're well aware of that. After all, a lot of capable mages lend their magic in the agricultural, health, and scientific sectors. Aster taps his claw on the table. There's a lot to talk about on this subject. It's not my preferred topic. He gets up from his seat and coughs. I like action. And so, would anyone like to show what they're capable of? An abrupt silence befalls the classroom. If Aster's face had evidenced any good feeling toward us before, it had now sullen again. Gabriel seems to be waking up by now. Now he listens and keeps his eyes more or less open. Hedwig 
still twiddling his pen without the slightest interest in Mr. Astor. Looking around at the rest of the students, there are many who are paralyzed in fear and doubt, just like me. Oh, Hoji, would you like to show us your abilities? From this distance, I can see an amused expression on his face. He's enjoying this, the bastard. A shock of fear runs through my spine. M me Uh, of course. I knew it had to happen eventually, but in this fashion? Refusing is not an option at all. It'll only make things worse. Unlike what Vilmar told me, it'd probably be better to show my lack of magic skills right away so he can get an idea of my ability, unlike what Vilmar does. At the end of the day, he is my teacher. Walking over to Mr. Astor in the center of the auditorium, my anxiety peaks.